Which attacks in Iceborne are powerful enough to one-shot a low rank Jagras? That is the big question. 14 different weapon types in each with the power to one-shot. But which attacks will work and which won't? This video is the ultimate test of strength for every attack and a ranking of the strongest attacks in the game. Let me present to you guys, these are the top 50 one-shot capable attacks in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. What's up guys, Chris here and welcome to another very exciting video. This is the first run where we use the perfect rush attack from Sword and Shield to one-shot Jagras. Here we will show the entire process of the hunt, from activating Fortify and cutting two times, to activating Heroics by utilizing the Poison Plant, until eventually the final one-shot happens. All of the other attacks in this video will only show the final moment where Jagras gets one-shotted. Alright, let's get into this. Now I'm going to commentate over every single one-shot by using the inference from Michi so you guys know exactly how we optimized over 50 different strategies to make them all one-shot capable. For almost all of the one-shots, we are going to be using the Assassin's Hood because this mantle gives us one guaranteed critical hit, no matter how much affinity we have. The Jagras on this investigation quest has very low HP. There is a thing called HP Rolls, which is a random RNG modifier which comes with every quest and changes the HP of the monster. On top of that, our investigation quest has the highest damage multiplier of 1.15, which translates to the lowest possible defense that Jagras can have. So we have a pretty good setup. We are starting with Sword and Shield and we will be using several attacks from this weapon type that are strong enough to one shot Jagras. Afterwards, we'll be moving on to the next weapon type. In order to get as many one shots as possible, we will use either a para meat or a sleep meat so Jagras gets paralyzed or falls asleep without us touching the Jagras. This way, we get a legitimate one shot while maintaining a single player HP. Jagras is about to eat the sleep meat, and we will be using the Assassin's Hood so we get an additional 1.1 damage multiplier on top of our 2.0 wake up hit, as well as a might pill for an extra 25 true attack. Here, a correct timing is very important to get the red glow on the weapon and thus a higher motion value. The Hard Bash the positioning here is very important. The attack has to be done in a certain angle if you don't want to accidentally wake up the monster with the second shield attack. Let's move on to bow. This is the power shot. Here you might ask yourself why we're using Paramid. Sleep Meat will only be used when we perform a one-shot with an attack that outputs one or two damage numbers, whereas a combo attack with three or more damage numbers, which all output the same damage, is stronger when the monster is paralyzed due to the Assassin's Hood multipliers. When the monster is sleeping, all hits are downgraded from the 1.5 Assassin's Hood multiplier to the 1.1 Assassin's Hood multiplier, but we also get the 2.0 Wake Up multiplier. When the monster is paralyzed on the other hand, on this clip right here, all hits get the high 1.5 Assassin's Hood multiplier, however we don't get any wake up multiplier anymore, which in this case is stronger. Thousand Dragons. The amount and type of sling or ammo we have highly influence the damage of this attack. Piercing pods, which you can get from Kuliaku, add by far the most damage to this attack. The more slinger ammo we have, the stronger this attack will be, so we're using slinger capacity level 5. The Dragon Piercer Special ammo boost level 2 and piercing shots level 2 are mandatory as well as having the right distance to the monster. This attack mostly consists of raw damage. We're moving on to Hunting Horn. This is the Echo Attack. With the attack up large Hunting Horn song, it is very easy to reach the attack cap. 
Self-improvement counts as visible base multiplier. It adds a 1.15 damage multiplier, which goes beyond our 2x attack cap. This is the Impact Echo Wave. In order to maximize the damage, we need to prepare three Echo Waves in a row, and as we play the Encore, we release them all at once. And by the way, Sharpness does not affect the damage of Echo Waves. This is the Echo Wave Dragon, a special type of Echo Wave that deals a lot of elemental damage. Even though this weapon doesn't have any Dragon Element in its weapon status, Dragon Attack still increases the damage output of this very attack. And lastly, the Overhead Smash, among the strongest melee attacks that the Hunting Horn has to offer. Let's move on to Gunlance, the Jumping Smash. This is an aerial attack and so we need to lure Jagras towards the ledge. We can do that by shooting Slinger ammo on the ground, and we can basically remote control Jagras to a position from where he will then take the shortest way towards the meat. This is the White Sweep, a powerful attack that can only be done within a certain combo. The Vibrant Fire. The only way to increase its damage output is to use Artillery Level 5 and combine it with the food skill Feline Bombardier. This is the Overhead Smash. Simple, but strong. Moving on to Insect Life, this is the Descending Thrust. This one looks like an aerial attack, but counts as normal attack since the airborne skill doesn't proc when using this move. This is the Tornado Slash, the Insect Life's most powerful attack with its highest motion value. Moving on to the Switch Axe, the Heavy Slam. As soon as we see the red glow on the weapon, while swinging the axe, we are ready to hit the monster. The red glow indicates a 30% buff on top of the true attack of the weapon. Sadly, it only counts for those swings and disappears as soon as we enter the animation of any other attack. The Morph Sweep. An attack that consists out of several round slashes where the second hit deals by far the most damage. The Element Discharge Finisher. Power file switch axes give us a pretty big attack multiplier in sword mode, which applies to the base attack, so that this further extends the attack cap of the switch axe and thus makes this attack stronger. Moving on to the great sword, this is the mid-air charge slash. In terms of DPS, this was the most powerful attack in Monster Hunter World base game. Its motion value was lowered by half since the Iceborne release. The Overhead Slash, the Greatsword's simple quick draw attack. The Rising Slash, 
It has a wide hitbox that hits the monster even if it approaches you from behind. It is also well known for its ability to throw other players into the air. The infamous Greatsword Tackle. Charging the sword increases the damage of the tackle significantly. It doesn't drain the sharpness, but sharpness increases its damage output. The True Charge Slash, the hit that can achieve the highest damage number in the game and its even stronger version, which is called TCS Power. Moving on to the Heavy Bowgun, Cluster Bomb 3. Clusters got nerfed a lot in Iceborne, mainly because of the max of 5 bomb berries in your pouch. However, the damage output of one Cluster Shot is still more than enough to kill a monster. Like all other explosions in the game, Clusters do not crit. Dragon Ammo this will deal way more damage when Jagras gets big, because when Jagras is big, his dragon weak zones will be much higher. But he can only be big if he's eating a monster and not a meat, which means in this case, there is no way for us to use sleep or para meat. Luckily, Jagras won't see us as long as he's in the eating animation, which means we can still make use of our Assassin's Hood Stealth Multiplier. Normal ammo level 3. This attack would be even stronger if it was possible to stack feline sharpshooter with feline heroics. The scope and 4 close range up mods are used in this run. Pierce ammo level 3. Pierce becomes more powerful when shot from the distance. The heavy bowgun mods used in this clip were the scope, 3x range attack up and most importantly the power barrel. Spread ammo level 3. This is really strong and the 7 damage numbers are enough to kill the monster. The heavy bogon mods are the scope and 4 times close range up. Vibrant ammo. An explosion that is split into 2 damage numbers. The recoil is fixed and it can also not be used with the scope and it doesn't make use of the full Volcano buff, which is also the reason why it was more beneficial to go for Artillery Secret in this scenario. Vibrant Snipe a piercing shot followed by lots of explosions. This is one of the most powerful attacks and sadly Capcom limited this attack in many ways. Heavy Bogan mods don't affect it. You can put on the scope but it doesn't do anything. The Volcana buff won't be fully utilized and only the piercing part of the shot can crit. Special ammo boost is a must have. The Virus Snipe Type 2. This attack can be unlocked by equipping the Virus Snipe mod, and it works totally differently compared to the normal Virus Snipe. The shot sticks onto the monster and remains there for a few seconds before it detonates. It can be stacked with the scope, but not with range attack up heavy bogan mods. Moving on to Light Bowgun. This is the Vibran Blast and the only one-shot capable attack of Light Bowgun. Triggered by the melee attack, the three mines can easily kill the Jagras. Moving on to Charge Blade, this is the Axe Smash. The Axe gets a visible base raw multiplier of 1.1 when the shield is charged, which adds again on top of the 2x raw attack cap. The Axe Amped Element Discharge. 
This hit is strong enough to one-shot the Jagras even though it's weaker than its stronger version, the Super Amped Element Discharge. The Super Amped Element Discharge. Well, if the previous attack was already strong enough, this one should certainly work, right? The Sword Condensed Element Slash, normally used to charge the sword, but strong enough to kill a monster. And lastly, the Savage Axe activation move called Savage Axe Slash. Moving on to the lands, this is the counter thrust. Entering the power guard mode doesn't change the damage, but it's strong enough to make Jagras capture ready. The finishing twin thrust. This attack benefits from the speed you gain from the running attack. Because the second hit is way stronger than the first hit, a paramed is the way to go. And the reverse attack. Same like with the previous attack, this one becomes stronger while running in turbo mode. The hammer. With the charged brutal Big Bang. As the name already says, this attack is brutal. We just need to make sure that none of the other hits wake him up. The Jumping Charge Attack Level 3. Aerial Hammer in Iceborne is what Aerial Greatsword used to be in the base game. This is an easy one shot. The Overhead Smash Level 1. Just a simple triangle attack. The Upswing. Because of the height difference, the monster needs to sleep above on a ledge. Otherwise, it would be impossible to hit the head without touching the monster with the hits from before. The Charged Follow-Up. Another hammer one-shot which needs accurate positioning. The Brutal Upswing. This move comes straight out of boxing. This is the Spinning Strong Upswing. And another one shot that can only be done on a ledge. This one needs perfect positioning. The Longsword. This is the Lie Spirit Slash, one of the new attacks added to Iceborne. The Red Spirit Gauge's 1.2 multiplier increases the damage even further. Spirit Round Slash, an attack that is normally used to increase the level of your Spirit Gauge. And finally, we are wrapping up the ultimate one-shot compilation with the Spirit Helmbreaker. This attack consists of two separate hits. Its second stronger hit could easily one-shot, but due to the fact that there is another small hit at the beginning, it would technically not count as a one-shot anymore. So in order to make the Helmbreaker an actual one-shot, we need a sleeping minion next to Jagras, which is quite tricky to set up, but it makes this one truly a one-shot. At this point, my grandma would have said, Chris, where are the doodle blocks?
blades. But Grandma, are you crazy? The dual blades are a really fast weapon. They can't one-shot anything. No, grandson. Have some respect. <sighs> All right, Grandma. Now, the dual blades can actually combo one-shot a monster, which is multiple hits, but all within one single move or attack. So, in honor of my grandma, these are the top 8 moves that could one-shot but consist of two separate or multiple hits within one attack. Let's begin with dual blades. This is the Demon Flurry, the little brother of the Demon Dance combo. This is the Spinning Blade Dance Finisher. This Beyblade attack is especially powerful on large monsters like Xenojiva or Kulf. This is the Sword Double Slash. Charging the sword adds too little explosion to the attack. This is the Worm Stake Cannon. Its shelling type and shelling level will increase the damage of the hits themselves, and artillery boosts the small explosion at the end. This is the Vibrant Snipe Clutch Claw attack. Because the Clutch Claw does damage, it doesn't count as a true one-shot anymore. This is the Jumping Spirit Blade 3. Jagras needs to be lured close to a ledge again where it is possible to perform this aerial attack. This is the Scaling Slash. This attack has to be started next to Jagras, and while doing the backwards jump, charging into Jagras' direction. And finally, this is the strongest Palico attack in the game, called the Meowkanel. The attack value of the Palico weapon doesn't influence the damage of this gadget at all. Palico Rally level 5 is the only thing we can use to increase our damage and so our Palico can one combo shot this Jagras. Now, these were all the attacks that did work, but how about all the other attacks? Here, we are going to show you guys some outtakes. The top 5 attacks that sadly didn't make it. The Lunging Melee Attack Coatings do not affect the damage of this attack. Charging the weapon doesn't help either, and so this attack is not strong enough to one-shot. the Leaping Slash. Even if it had the power of the triple Kinsect buff, which is 5% more damage compared to the double buff that we used here, the damage still wouldn't be enough for a capture. Flaming Bowgun ammo is also not strong enough to one-shot. Rapid Fire with Light Bowgun would have been even worse in comparison. The Heavy Bowgun's melee attack. Even if performed as an aerial attack, the melee attack still isn't strong enough to one-shot. And lastly, the special overcharged ammo. To make this attack one-shot capable, it is only allowed to hit the monster with the very last shot, which then also drains our HP completely and activates feline heroics at the same time. Sadly, the damage is still not enough even with the new Sofi armor equipped.
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Michi and I have worked on this for quite some time. Before we end this video, if you are native Japanese and speak English and want to join TDS to work on our Japanese YouTube channel, write me a message in my Twitter DMs. With that being said, guys, stay tuned for more high quality Iceborne content on TDS, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.